In this video series, you're going to learn how to create your own DVD product that will be automatically distributed for you using a software called Kunaki. Now, Kunaki takes care of the distribution for you, but what you need to do first is you need to create a product and get it onto DVD. So we're going to go over those steps first. Now, of course, you're going to need some sort of product to put on DVD. This can be your own product, or it can be a product that you've purchased private label rights or resale rights to. Now, of course, the easiest way is to use something that you have rights to if it's a quality product. I have something here called the Basics of Internet Business. It is a PLR product. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Windows Media version of these files. Okay, so you can use either the Windows Media version or you can use an AVI version, whatever you want. Depends how you're going to set up your DVD. So first let's go over how to create a DVD from these files that will play on a regular DVD player as well as on a computer that has Windows Media Player on it. So what you're going to have to do is install a piece of software. And the software we're going to use is called DVD Flick. This is a free software that will allow you to burn directly to a DVD, which is what you need for Kunaki to work. You're going to have to have your product burnt to DVD first because that's where it gets the source from. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use DVD Flick. So first you're going to want to download and install the software. And just click download DVD Flick. And it goes to Source Forge and it will start its download automatically from there. Now once it's downloaded, just go through the install process. Okay, so here's what DVD Flick looks like after it's installed. Now make sure that you take all the defaults when you're going through the install wizard. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our project settings. So we go to project settings, and then we'll just give it a title. So we're going to call this basics internet business. Okay, take the defaults for the rest of this here. Okay, and click on video. And again, we're going to keep the defaults here. Audio, we're going to keep the defaults here. Playback, so after a title has finished playing, what we want to do here, play the next title, play it again, stop playing, return to the menu. So you can pick how you want this to work. Let's say that we're going to return to the menu. And then burning, we can either create an ISO image on our hard disk or it can burn project directly to disk. It's up to you what you want to do here. Eventually you're going to have to have it burnt to your disk in order for Kanaki to be able to read it. So I'm going to just pick burn to the disk. And it has already detected where my DVD drive is. So that's all we have to do here. Okay, so we just click accept and our project settings are now in there. So the next thing we have to do is add our video files. Now let's just click add a title. Okay, and then we find the titles that we want on here. Okay, so we have our different ones here. So what we can do is hold down our control key and then just pick them all. Click open. Okay, now we can move these up and down. So we need to move this up to the top. As you can see, we have in this particular pack, we have an order of one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's easy to tell where they belong. They also contain titles. So all we have to do now is edit each title. So on the first one, we'll edit the title and then we can just call it change the title here to what we want it to say okay so the importance of branding in this case and then we can choose our target aspect ratio 4 to 3 which is normal or you can make it widescreen 16 to 9 like this and what that's going to do in this case is stretch it out a little bit so I'm going to keep it at normal Click accept 
go to the next one and then we just do the same thing to all of these videos. We'll just go and change them as need be. Okay, so as you can see here, I've changed all of the titles. Okay, now what we do is we go to our menu settings and now we can determine what we want for a menu. Okay, so we can have no menu or we can choose the different types of menus we have here. We have mosaic, orange LED, etc. So you just pick whichever ones you want. I'm going to choose simple white and just click accept. And now all that's left to do is to create our DVD. Just click on that. Just telling us our destination folder already exists and it's doing that because I've already created a DVD before. So I'm just going to click yes, let it overwrite it, here is telling us that it's going to burn it to DVD after it's finished rendering. So we don't really need to see that again. So you can cl click on that. Click OK. And then it will go through this process here. There are seven different steps. And once it finishes those, it's all burnt to DVD. OK, so at this point, it has finished rendering everything. And it is now buffering it. And it's going to write it to the device. So once it's done, it's going to be on DVD ready for Kanaki. Now we're going to go over the process of creating your DVD for delivery using Kanaki. Now Kanaki does a lot of things automatically for you once you set it up. You can see what they are if you're going to deliver a CD or a DVD, which in whichever case. You can see what they do for your manufacturing assembly, full color DVD printing, DVD case, full color one panel insert, full color DVD case cover, cellophane wrapping, UPC, barcode if you need it 24 hour rush manufacturing and you get all that for $1.75 per DVD so as you can see that's a really good deal now what you need to do is set up your account and to do that first thing you need to do is go to new customers and then all you do is you download their software that you use to design so just click here to download the CD DVD publishing software once you get it downloaded go ahead and install it Okay, so here is the CD DVD publishing software that you're going to use. So click the green button to start. Okay, and here's where you can fill out your information and tell it what you're going to use as your source. So we're going to, in this case, use a video, but you can also use a audio, a game, or a data other. In other words, ebooks or something like that. In this case, we're a video. Okay, and then if you want to use a UPC code, you can. You can add a UPC code and Kanaki will actually create one for you. Then you can go ahead and fill out all of this other information or any of the information you want to put in here. The information that is absolutely required are in dark here. So the title, studio, and that's really all that is required from there. So go ahead and fill that part out. Okay, now we just click the green button here. This is where we're going to design our DVD case. So as you see over here, we can have auto design or custom design. And then we pick our disk type, which is DVD and our case type, which is DVD. Now at this point, we could select our own image or we can select one of their in stock images. Now, if your PLR product came with its own images, you might want to manipulate those images so that you have something you can use here that's more customized. Otherwise, you can go ahead and use a stock image. Okay, so let's just go with the auto design for now. So we can select one of their stock images over here. Just click browse. And then there are different types you can choose from here. So you can go through and find one that you think fits well. Okay, so I'm just going to use a solid color in this case because I don't really see one that fits very well with what I'm doing. So you can go through, find one that you like. You can view the full product here. Okay, and there's what it's going to look like for you when it's done. Okay, so well, let's pick one here. Just select this template. And it loads us in for us here. Now you can see that it picked up our information that we put in and put it on the DVD for us. Okay, at this point we click 
the green button again. Okay, now it's going to ask us for a DVD drive source, so it knows where it is. And since we have our DVD already in our disk drive, it picked up the files for us. Okay, so now we click Next. Now we click Save As. We fill out our name in here, whatever we want to call it, Basics of Internet Business in this case. Click Save. Click Next. Okay, and as you can see, it is compiling our product. So up here you can see the percent that's done. So this takes a little while for it to finish. Okay, as you can see, we're 99%. Okay, now we can launch our product. The master product has been completed and ready for testing and uploading to our facility. So it's saved to the location below and it's showing us where on our computer is saved. Okay, so let's launch it. Okay, and it's showing us our information here. Here's the front of the case. We can open the case. Okay, here's the inside of the case, and here is what our DVD looks like. Can rotate the case. Okay, that shows us the different views we have. Okay, this is the back, that's the spine, and that's the inside. Now over on the left here, we can print the disk and the case. Or we can extract the contents to a folder. And we can also record the contents to a DVD. Not much sense in doing that since we already have it on DVD. So if we click print disk in case, then we can pick the type of paper we want to use here. Click print and it'll come out on our printer for us. And we can click done. We can extract the contents to a folder here. We can browse for a folder and then we can extract it there. Okay, we can start extraction. Okay, and now it just does the reverse of what we did before. It's going to extract all the files into this folder. Okay, so it's complete. Okay, so at this point we would go ahead and we would publish. Now if you don't have an account yet you need to create one at this point down here. Just fill out this information and then click publish down here and that'll set up your account for you. Otherwise you're just going to sign in up here. Okay, at this point it's uploading the product for us to their servers. There we go. And this is going to take quite a while to accomplish. See about an hour here. Once it's up there, we can go to the website and we can activate it and we can have it published so that it can be sent out as well. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can use your own images in your project. Now if you have a PLR product or your own product, you probably have your own images. Now the problem is that you need to have a square image in order to be able to use it on the disk. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify these a little bit. So let's go to paint.net. You can download paint.net for free. And I have a link to that on the resources document. So let's open up paint.net now. Okay, and then let's let's make sure we have a square canvas size because we need a square image. So let's just go to image and canvas size and let's set this to 800 by 800. Make sure maintain aspect ratio is unchecked. And there we go. We now have a square image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import a layer and we're going to use one of our files. So let's import from file and then we can bring in something from here. So let's bring in our ebook cover and we can put that down in the middle here somewhere like that 
and we can use that as our image if we want. Now, of course, we can bring in other images as well if we want, but this is just a simple example of how you can manipulate the image. Now, you can't actually just use this image by itself because it has been rendered into a DVD cover and it's not going to look right. Okay, so let's, let's move this around a little bit. And this is going to take some practice to get it right as to where things need to be. Okay, so we'll just take that and we'll save it. And we'll just call it custom. And then we'll change this to JPEG. Click Save. Click OK here and flatten. Okay, that's all ready. Now what we do is we go back and we start the process again. We'll go and we'll open up our design window. Okay, so we'll just continue here. I've already done this before. Now, let's talk about the UPC barcode. We might want to use this if we're going to publish to Amazon or somewhere like that. So it might not be a bad idea to incorporate a UPC code. Okay, and then again, just fill out the stuff here that you need. Okay, and then click the next button. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're still going to use auto design, but this time we're going to select our own image. Now, custom design is a more advanced option. It's more for people that can create their own graphics. We're not going to go into that. We're just going to use the auto designer. Okay, so we're going to select from our own images and then a window comes up and we're going to select the one we called custom, which is this one. And there it is. Okay, so that's what our cover looks like. We'll click, we can open the case now and here's what the DVD itself looks like. Here's our insert. Okay, there's the back and the spine. Okay, and then at this point you have your custom case created. So you click Next. Again, you're going to go through the thing where you select your DVD again, grabs the files, you click Next. Save your production file. So you do the Save As, and then you just save it to here. Okay, save, continue, and now it's going to render it for us. And we just go through the same process, render it, upload it, and it's all ready to go. In this video, we're going to go through Kanaki's back office, and then we're going to set up our shopping cart using the Kanaki system. Okay, so when you sign up and you log in, this is what you see. Now, what you can do, first of all, is decide how you want to get paid. You can have a check or they can send your payment to PayPal for you automatically every month. So you can put whatever you want here. So if we want to be paid by PayPal, we just put yes here and then we put our PayPal account email address in here and submit the changes. Now further down here, you can see what paychecks were sent out and when. So you can just click on one of these if it's relevant and you can look at what paychecks went out. Okay, pending orders. This is going to be the orders that have been accepted, but you have not made arrangements to pay for yet. In other words, the customer may have paid for them through one of your other providers, such as an XML feed or through another shopping cart but they haven't actually been marked as paid in the Kanaki system. So you're going to have to go in here and you're going to have to pay for those. And you can also pre-fund your account so that this happens automatically. Now this is going to only happen if you're using a third-party shopping cart or you're using the XML feed that Kanaki supplies that you can use with other payment processors. So if you are going to use a third-party shopping cart, you're going to have to deal with this part here and to do that you can just have it paid automatically from your credit card or from your PayPal account. Now down at the bottom here it shows you any pending orders. 
So these are the ones that are going to need to be paid for before they'll go out. Okay, you can view and track your recent orders here. Of course, I just put this product up, so we haven't done anything with it yet. Now, before we go any further into these, we should actually go and configure our product. Now, all your products show up down at the bottom here after they've been uploaded. So what we can do is we can go into configure first. And this is where we can set up our product details. Okay, now as you can see, you can order a free review copy of the product and they'll mail it to you. Now this is only once per publisher, not once per product. So once you do this the first time, that's it. And that's just to show you the quality of the product. Okay, and then what we need to do is go down a little further. We need to set our retail pricing. Okay, so we have here set your retail price for the product and this is if you're going to use Kunaki shopping cart. What they'll do here is they'll send you a monthly check or to your PayPal account for the amount of order you sold times your retail price minus the $1.75 manufacturing cost. Okay, so this service we have enabled and I set the retail price at $17 and we include the product in the gallery. So we'll apply that. Down further, if you want to be able to have the retail price go directly to your PayPal account, you can do that here. If you do this, you're going to have pending orders that you're going to have to deal with. And we just went through that. So you would have to go to the pending order screen and pay for those products there. Okay, so if we're going to use PayPal, we can do the same thing here, $17 or whatever it is, and we can enable the service. We'll also have to put our PayPal email account in here so it knows where to send the money. Okay, we'll apply there. Okay, now we have some different websites here that are used. For instance, if we're going to use the Kanaki shopping cart, we have two URLs here. We have the sales page, and this is the sales page that they provide for you. And it has all the details that you put on the design screen here. They can also rotate the case. Look at what's in the case. Look at the DVD, etc. Okay. Then up here, they can order their quantities and they pick their country here, for instance, and then they can pick where they are and calculate the shipping. And then it brings up the screen that tells them how much it's going to be. So if they're going to go by airmail, it's $4 and $17 for the product for a total of $21. They just go through here and make arrangements to pay for it through their credit card. So it's as simple as that. Now, there's also another screen here. And this is the screen that has all your products on it. So if you had more than one product, you would see them all lined up here and then they can go through and they can pick the quantities here. Same deal up at the top and then they calculate the shipping and it will give them a total for all the DVDs at the order. Now similarly with PayPal you have two different sales pages. Though they look the same, let's click on this one. Here's a sales page for PayPal and again they can rotate the case And you see here that they have PayPal is their payment option. And it's going to go to your PayPal account. So again, they would pick their country here, calculate the shipping, and then they would continue through. So they just put in their details down here. They go to checkout. And then it should redirect to our PayPal account here. Okay, and indeed it did. It redirected to our PayPal account, and now we can accept the payment. And once that happens, they will show up in the pending order. So that's how you can use the PayPal side of it. Now, if we go back to here again, we also have the same page with all of our products on it here with the PayPal option. Okay, so here it is here. It looks exactly the same as the other page. And again, if they put in their details up here, 
hit calculate shipping, it's going to do the same thing again. Okay, but this time again, PayPal, and then they have their shipping options they can use here. Put in their details, and when they check out here, again, they will go through PayPal, and the pending orders will appear in your pending order section. And just as a side note, if you look at the bottom here, there are different places that you can sell your CDs or DVDs. You've got CD Baby for CDs, and you can sell your product on Amazon.com as well. Amazon.com has a facility that allows you to sell your own products as long as they're physical products and have a UPC code. Since we set up a UPC code, we are able to use the Amazon service. And it's the Amazon Advantage program. And, and down here, you can read about the Amazon Advantage program and sign up for it. And once you sign up for it and your product's approved, you're all ready to go. Okay, now let's go back. We have our product set up now. Let's go back to the front page here. And now let's look at some of these other things. Okay, now pending orders. We just talked about that. And this is where your PayPal orders would be if you took the PayPal option. We talked about that. We try, talked about view and track recent orders. Now down here you have different ways that you can order and ship your products manually. So you can order and ship your products to a single address. You can order and ship your products to multiple recipients and addresses. And you can order and ship your products to a CSV list of recipients and addresses. CSV is like a spreadsheet type of format. So you need to format those properly and then you can use that as a list of where to ship your products. So if we go into the CSV we can enter our names manually here. So say we have 10 that we're going to send. So we could go next here and then we can enter the name of the 10 people we're going to send here. Now obviously this would probably be easier to do using CSV. So if we did the CSV method it comes up here and tells us that we have to use the following fields in our CSV file. So if we set that up with these fields in it and we have 10 records, then we can just import that into here. Up here we have our delimiter, comma, pipe, or tab. A delimiter simply tells the program where the first field ends and the next one begins. So we'd have company, comma, address one, comma, address two, etc. So if we look down here, we have name, comma, address, comma, address to, comma, city, state, zip, and country here. Same with all these records. Use one record per line. So that's all we have to do. Name, company, address one, address two, city. So basically all we have to do is create records like we see here. So just put our data in a string and a text file and then paste it in here. Okay, let's go back here. They also have a couple of APIs here. These are advanced program interfaces, and these are for use by external programs. That's how they can pipe data into Kanaki. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm just going to show you how you can set up a simple website that points to your Kanaki products so that you can sell them from your own website. To wind things up in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can create your own simple site to sell your products from. Now, you can just create a blog to do this. This is the easiest thing to do, whether you want to use WordPress or Blogger. It doesn't matter whichever one you're familiar with. I'm just going to show you how to use WordPress. Now, most cPanel accounts have Fantastico, which allows a one-click or two-click install of WordPress. So just go to Fantastico. And then just go to WordPress and then click New Installation. Then you just really fill out this form and install WordPress. It's as simple as that. When you're done, you'll have a simple WordPress blog set up.
Okay, so here's our basic blog. So all we have to do now is log in and we can start changing things a little bit here. Again, you can use whichever platform you're most familiar with. So you can go ahead and use Blogger if you're more familiar with that. But I'm going to use WordPress and what I would do first is I would go and create a home page. So I'd go to pages and then I would just create a new page called my home page. So I do add new. Now we just put a simple introduction that I want on here for my home page. Okay, so of course you do a better job than that. And then we'd want to make sure that we don't allow comments or pings on our home page. And then we would just publish. Okay, now that we'll go and we'll edit our pages because we want to get rid of the automatic page that was in here that was created automatically by WordPress. And same with the posts, if we go to posts, get rid of all these. Okay, and then what we can do is now we can just create new posts for each of our videos. Okay, so we could. Well, even before we do that, we should set up a category for our videos. So let's go to categories. And we can just set up any categories we want. So we could say internet business. And then, of course, any categories you feel you need, this is where you set them up. Okay, so we save this one. We should also delete anything out of links that we're not using. Links. Get rid of all of this. Okay, now we're ready to start adding posts. So we could say the beginner's guide to internet business. Okay, and then we would put a description in here. Okay, we should also put an image in here. And we already created a custom image. Uh, we could also use one of the e-covers that we have here. So we can just upload that into the post here. So we just go to here, add an image. And then we can select the file and just grab it from our computer. Okay, and it'll upload it for us. Now we can just click insert into post. And there it is there. Okay, now at this point we need to actually put a link to this product over to Kanaki. Actually, we should edit this. And what we want to do is align it to the left. That way, you see that the writing will go around it. So let's update that. And now we can put our link here. So we can say click here to order. Okay, and then what we do is we go over to our Kanaki site. And then we decide what we're going to use. We can use Kunaki's order page, or we can use the PayPal order page if we want the money to go right away into our account. So we can just copy this link here. Let's highlight it, do a copy. And then we can go back to here. And then all we do is we highlight this. And then we click this link here. Paste our link in and target. We can have it open in the same window or a new window and insert. Okay, at this point we can publish it. 
Okay, now what we want to do also is go into settings and set our home page up. So let's go to settings and then we need to go to reading and then we need to create a static page. This is so we can set our front page to our home page. And you only need to do this if you want to have a home page. If you want it to act like a regular blog, then you don't even need to bother with this. Okay, if we view the site now, okay, here's our home page, and here is our okay, and here is our post here, and if we click here, it goes to the PayPal page. The next thing we could do is choose a better theme. So what we could do is just go look for a theme that fits with what we're trying to do here. You just do a Google search and bring in a theme that you think is appropriate. Okay, so we can just do a search on Google for the type of theme we want. Okay, so I just did a free video WordPress theme and we can look through here and find one we like. Okay, once we find one we like, we can have a look at the demo. And we can just download it if we want to. So we just save this to a folder. Okay, here it is, bluedream.zip. So all we have to do now is upload that and unzip it on the server. Or we can unzip it down here on our computer and upload the thing to our server. So let's just do it this way. We'll unzip it here. And then we need to use an FTP client to upload it. Okay, what you see in front of you is an FTP client called FileZilla. You can download it free. And when you open it up, all you have to do is up here you can type in your host, which is your domain name, your username, and your password. And then click Quick Connect and it'll connect you up. On the right side you will see your web host and on the left side is your computer. So what you want to do is navigate to where your web documents are supposed to be and your host will have told you that. Usually it's public HTML or htdocs or something like that. Once in there you want to go to wp-content and themes. Okay and then what we want to do is upload the blue dream that's inside of the main Blue Dream directory. So just upload that and all the files will get uploaded for you. Okay, so those are all up there. Now we can go back to our site here and we can go back to the admin and then we can go to appearance and themes and then we can pick the new theme here. Let's activate. Okay, let's have a look at our site now. Okay, there it is. Okay, now we, there's our post and if we click there, it goes over to our order page. Okay, now a couple things we didn't do quite right here. Let's go back and let's edit our post because we didn't give it a category for one thing. So let's edit this and let's pick a category for it. it should be under internet business. And the other thing we can do is use widgets. If we go to widgets, we can decide what's going to be on our sidebar. So what we can put over there now is whatever we want. So if we want to search and we want recent posts, categories, whatever you want. And then what you can do is you can move these up and down as you see fit. Save the changes. Okay, now if we visit our site, we'll see there's our search, our recent posts, and our categories. Okay, so now we can get directly to our page that has our product on it. Okay, so that was an example of how to use WordPress to set up a simple site. Of course, you can use 
any type of blog you want to set up a simple site or you can use a simple HTML pages. Okay, now last thing I would do is I would make a link to all of my Kanaki products. I would just do this in the link section. So I go links and then I would add a new link and then I would say see all of my teaching DVDs. Okay, at this point I would go back to Kanaki and then I would pick up this URL now which goes to my entire gallery and then I would put that in the web address. And then down here we decide how we want it to open so underscore blank is in a new window and then we just add the link here. We might want to also create a link category that's up to you. See right now it's going to go into blog row but we could just say recommended videos or whatever you want to call it. We'll just call it my DVDs. Add the category and then let's go back and edit our link to put it into the right category here. Put it in my DVDs. Update. Okay, so we visit our site now. We'll see my DVDs and see all my teaching DVDs. If you click on that, it goes to the proper page here where they can look at all of our DVDs and order them from here. Okay, so that's it. You now know how to set up a physical product on Kanaki and sell it from your own website.